Hello, my name is David Waltzman and I'm a simulation product specialist with GoEngineer. Today we're going to check out the cooling analysis functionality inside of SolidWorks Plastics. We'll start off here by looking at our phone case and creating a solid mesh. We'll be looking at the volume of our mold as well as the cooling channels in this analysis. This requires us to select the sketches in our model for our cooling channels as well as specify the diameters of those channels. From there, we need to decide what's the volume of our mold. So we can enter in coordinates as well as just choose the size. Now we have several domains in our model, our cavity, our cooling channels, and our mold. We'll need to create a mesh for each of these volumes. So first will be our cavity. And then from there, we'll do our mold as well. Our cooling lines already have our 1D mesh created from the previous step. Now we'll take our surface mesh and create our solid mesh from it. For our cavity, we'll be creating a, a hybrid mesh. So this adds prismatic elements on the boundary layers so that we get a better definition for our flow. And for our mold, we'll be sticking with the standard tetrahedral to assume this whole block. So now we can see all the different element types in this cross section and that we are ready to proceed with our analysis. As in every plastics analysis that we complete in SOLIDWORKS, we'll need to define the material for the polymer and the cavity. The next step that's new for us is defining the coolant in our channels. In this case here, we'll be using water. The last step here as far as material inputs is for our molds. We'll be using a 420 stainless steel for that volume. In addition to our standard fill and pack settings that we've become accustomed to, we now have cool settings as well, where we can control the inlet melt temperature, the temperature of the coolant coming in, the air temperature, of our shop floor, as well as the flow rate of our coolant. Now under our boundary conditions, we have the options for our cool pipe. Here we have listed our two sets of uh, cooling channels. We can specify their inlet temperature to be consistent with our last property manager at 25, and those flow rates to be 200 cc's per second. Also notice that the direction of these are opposing. This is a good method so that you have uniform cooling inside of the model. From here we run the analysis. Completing a cooling analysis gives us access to lots of new post-processing that we're able to view. The first of which I'd like to explore is the part cooling time. By taking a cross section here we're able to see that some areas cool in this use 4 seconds while others take as long as 22 seconds. The next type of plot I'd like to show you is the average mold temperature. Here again, looking at our clipping plane, we're able to see these areas are hotter where it's surrounded by the cavity. I'd also like to go over the temperature at the end of cooling. And in this scenario, we'll just be looking at our cavity to see here how long it takes to cool down. Let's consider a minimum value of 105 degrees here. And this ISO plot is now showing us the region that's above the ejection temperature for a material. So as we reduce this volume, we can lessen the cooling time associated with our cycle. Lastly, I'd like to investigate the effect of our cooling lines. Where the cooling line is closest to the cavity and next to its thickest parts, we see that the average heat flux is much higher than the rest of the cooling line. We get the same effect on the bottom as well. Well, that's uh, what I'd like to show you regarding cooling line functionality inside of SolidWorks Plastics. This again is David Waltzman from GoEngineer.